The year is 2021. The second decade of the 21st century is in full swing. Technology is advancing at a staggering rate and we're still using single-use fixed temperature heat detectors like it's the mid 20th century. Why is that? Well, first we need to answer the question of why heat detection is necessary in the first place. After all, why wait for air to heat up, a process that can take several minutes due to a phenomenon called thermal lag, when smoke detection is much, much quicker? To answer this, let's back up even further and start at the beginning. What exactly is a single-use heat detector, and what about them makes them single-use? How do they work? We first need to make the distinction that not every type of fixed temperature heat detector is single-use. There are fixed temperature heat detectors that are resettable, like this addressable model right here behind me. They are usually electronic in nature, and thus do not physically break when activated. The most common types of single-use fixed temperature heat detectors are spot-type fusible link heat detectors and line-type heat detectors, and both are extremely simple in operation. For the sake of brevity, this video will only cover spot-type detectors. Perhaps the others will warrant a separate video in the future. A spot-type heat detector contains a small disc and a plunger held under spring compression. This small disc is soldered to the body of the detector itself. When the ambient air reaches a certain temperature, usually around 135 degrees Fahrenheit, or 57.2 degrees Celsius, or 330.372 Kelvin, or 594.67 rankin tubes counting, the solder melts, the disc falls away, and the spring inside of the heat detector forces the plunger up into a set of contacts, completing the circuit. And voila, you have an alarm condition. Unfortunately, while the fixed temperature method makes for a cheap and reliable method of detecting heat, or rather, heated air, it has one major defining drawback. You cannot use the heat detector again. It is now permanently an alarm and now must be replaced and disposed of. Why would systems be built in this way when the technology of having a self-resetting electronic heat detector allows for a far less wasteful method of detection? Well, as is the reason for a great many things, it all comes down to cost. Money drives many decisions. As you might expect, the cost to manufacture and by extension to have installed in a building is far cheaper for a mechanical heat detector than it is for an electronic one. There's simply less stuff inside, so it's much more inexpensive. If we go directly from Amazon's prices, which I realize aren't always the most accurate, the cost of a single-use fixed temperature system sensor 5600 is roughly $19. That isn't the cost to manufacture the device, or even how much an alarm company will pay to the manufacturer for each individual device, but this serves as a point of reference. An electronic heat detector, like the system sensor 5151, runs for roughly $50. Because the mechanical type is so much cheaper, it can be placed in hard to maintain spaces as a sort of set and forget solution that only needs to be replaced if it is activated. Many mechanical heat detectors can accept a full range of voltages, up to a full 120 volt AC current without blowing up in the way an electronic heat detector would. This is a really important factor for use cases like elevator shunt trips. An elevator shunt trip will shut down the elevator when its heat detector is activated. These detectors may run on 24 volts DC with an addressable relay running to the shunt trip at 120 volts AC, or the detector itself may have 120 volts AC running through it. In the latter case, only a mechanical heat detector can be used to directly activate the shunt trip. Depending on how the elevator shunt trip system is designed and installed, this latter case may be the only option. Another factor is their reliability. Mechanical heat detectors are well over 100 years old in terms of their technology. In contrast, addressable electronic heat detectors are only about 10 to 15 years old. In the fire protection world, reliability is king. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. None of this is of course to say that electronic heat detectors do not have a place in systems today or do not have a function. They are, after all, a lot more advanced in their detection scheme. Because modern addressable heat detectors are essentially thermistors that send heat data to the fire alarm panel, they can simply tell the panel how much heat they are detecting and the rate at which the heat is rising, and the panel itself can make the decision whether to go into alarm. It is also important to remember that heat detectors are not listed as life safety devices, and this contrasts them from smoke detectors. Heat detectors are designed to respond with high levels of heat, characteristic of a rip-roaring fire. Unfortunately, this means the conditions may not be suitable for escaping the fire. Smoke detectors are life safety devices because they go off early enough to give people a chance of escaping the building before it is too late. Therefore, heat detectors are more intended as property protection than life safety. 
This is usually to be expected in use cases like elevator shunt trip, where an elevator smoke detector is expected to go off before the heat detector, setting the alarm off much earlier and giving the occupants of the building more time to escape. I hope this video was able to give a brief perspective on why we still use fixed temperature, single use mechanical heat detectors even today, when with the advent of affordable addressable technology means it is no longer our only option. Perhaps in the coming years we will see these bastions of the 20th century completely replaced, but for now we will likely continue to see them in elevator shafts, commercial kitchens, high school locker rooms, and dorm bathrooms for the foreseeable future. And as always, I thank you for watching. I would like to extend a personal thanks to the personnel at the Fire Protection Laboratory at Oklahoma State University. They let me film in the fire alarm lab and helped make this video possible. My sincerest thank you to them.